finished sorting the fan mail, Mary? Yeah, just about, Ted. Oh, here's another one for you, from the Salvation Army. <laughs> oh, how much are you asking them for, Ted? <laughs> oh, I see Murray's got a flower just like Mary's. Yeah, my daughter gave it to me. Hey, it smells just like summer when I was a kid. It's plastic, Ted. <laughs> I know, it smells just like my old beach ball. <laughs> Did you know that Ted suggested that because of the gas the shortage that we start a carpool? Well, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Well, we'd need two cars. You, Gordy, Lou, and I would go in one. Ted would go in the other. <laughs> well, there's a letter for you, Murph. For me? Well, I never get any mail. How can it be for me? I don't know. Well, it can't be for me. How can it be for me? Dear Murray Slaughter, I still say it's not for me. I've never written a letter like this before. Oh, Murray, you got a fan letter. <laughs> it can't be for me. Well, there's a lot of us out here who realize that Ted Baxter only reads the words, but that somebody with a rare point of view is actually writing them. <laughs> it's not for me. However, we know it takes a twisted, perverted, pinko rat like you to write it. It's for me. Uh, Mr. Grant, don't forget you have that meeting with Mr. Finch at 1 o'clock. Right. Well, it's 1 o'clock now. Mary, every time I have to go up for a production meeting with the production director, I have to sit there for 10 minutes while he tries to impress me with long-distance phone calls to Milwaukee. Yeah, well, this is a pretty important meeting, though. Oh, I know it is, Mary. For you. It's your idea to have a Sunday afternoon talk show, not mine. I'm just going up there to hear him say yes or no. Well, it's a terrific idea, and if Finch has any taste at all, he's got to like it. Finch? Taste? He's the guy who scheduled reruns of My Mother the Car at 7 o'clock, so he'd have something to watch while he ate. <laughs> Mr. Grant, it's, it's after one. Mary, there's nothing to be nervous about. He's either going to love your idea, or he's going to say it stinks. You see, man, there's nothing to be nervous about. Well, he's right, you know. I mean, it really doesn't matter. If he likes the idea, then I'll produce my own show. If he doesn't like it, I won't. It doesn't matter. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Sitting here at my same little desk, earning my same little money. Mur, it matters. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, yeah, Jill, he's on his way up now. How could he cancel it? Oh. Oh? Oh! Yes, well, uh, we'll just uh, send Mr. Grant down when he gets there. No, 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 I'll tell him myself. And Jill, you are a wonderful secretary. Bye. What happened? Well, Mr. Finch had to cancel the meeting, but he left word to go ahead and try one show just to see how it works out. Murray, I'm going to produce my own show! Mary, that's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh! Well, Murray, I just hope I do a good job. Are you yeah. going to be fine? You really think so? I know so. <laughs> Finch wasn't there. Why are you smiling at me? I know something <laughs> you don't know. Hey, don't get cute. I hate cuteness. Cuteness is not one of my favorite things. Mr. Finch approved the idea. At least we're going to do a pilot. Mr. Grant, I'm a producer. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Mary. Well, you don't seem very happy for me. Mary, I've been a producer for a long time, and I know something. <laughs> Oh, boy, it's nice and warm in here. You know, they lowered the temperature at the store again today. It was so cold, Mayor. A guy sprained his back testing a frozen water bed. <laughs> hey, listen, I got some great news today. What? Rhoda, the program director, wants to do my show. What show? Remember that Sunday afternoon talk show idea I came up with? Ah, uh-huh. Well, you don't seem very excited. I know, isn't it funny? I'm usually such an emotional person. 
Can you imagine this? I'm not excited over this news. No, no, what's wrong? Nothing. So, they're using your idea for a show, huh? Hey, come on, what is it? Okay, Nan, you've obviously forgotten, but the idea for the Sunday afternoon talk show was mine. Yours? Mine. Rhoda! I don't think so. <laughs> Mary, I know so. Come on, Rhoda, I remember exactly how it came up. Remember, it was that Sunday afternoon, mm -hmm. you and I were sitting around wondering what we were going to do, and I said something like, uh, gee, I wish there were a way to find out what's going on in this city. And I suppose you don't remember how I then said something like, why don't you do a show about it? It could be an hour on Sunday afternoons from various locations. You could do celebrity interviews and features on what's happening around the Twin Cities. Art exhibits, restaurant tips, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, Rhoda, I can't be expected to remember everything. <laughs> I mean, my mind is not a tape recorder. Or maybe it is, and you accidentally erased that part of the tape. <laughs> oh, Rhoda, I feel just... Awful! I stole your idea! Oh, come on. Listen, you didn't do it on purpose. Hey, you know what? We could work on the show together. It's just one show. You could help me nights and on weekends. You mean it? Yeah! Gee. I don't know. That could be very exciting. It could. I mean, and you're creative. That's the main thing. Oh, Mary, what do I know about television? I mean, I'm a window dresser. Oh, Rhoda! But maybe. I don't Come know. on, you got to have some ideas about what you'd like to see on television. Yeah, I do. Just once, I would love to see the man from Glad stuff Mrs. Olsen into a giant bag. <laughs> you this, but <clears throat> Rhoda and I were uh, talking about the new Sunday talk show, and, well, <laughs> you'll never guess what I did. I mean, we discovered the, the darndest thing, you know, it's <laughs> just incredible. If, if you had a million years, you would never guess. Mary, I mean, don't make me guess. I don't want to guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems that the, uh, the idea for the show, um, that I, um, appropriated it from Rhoda. Appropriated? Uh, yes, it's a word. Yeah, I know it's a word. <laughs> yeah, appropriate. It means to steal. Yes, and I, uh, I cannot produce a show that I Mary, appropriate. Mary, no. I use other people's ideas all the time. How many times have I taken credit for terrific ideas you've come up with? Well, uh... Okay, bad example. <laughs> that's because you haven't come up with that many terrific ideas. <laughs> the point is, that's the business. But the point is that Rhoda is my friend, and I can't take all the credit for the show. All right, okay, look. If it'll make you feel any better, we'll throw her name up on the screen every week. Created by Rhoda, the window dresser. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grant, I would really like Rhoda to work on the show with me. What does she know about television? Well, not having been in television could be a plus. She still has her ideals. <laughs> Mary, people who still have their ideals don't stand a chance in television. <laughs> Mr. Grant, now, I... Wait a minute, really... what am I arguing with you for? You're the producer, you want Rhoda, you got it. Hey, terrific, Mr. Yeah. Grant, thank you. Yeah, listen, Mary, about this show, there's one thing I'd like you to promise you'll do for me. Yeah, sure, what? Don't mention it to me again. <laughs> Did you ask him? Yes. And he said, okay. Fantastic. Isn't oh. that great? Rhoda, don't. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I can guess just thank you, Lugret, for being Mary. really terrific. Yeah. And when you hear the ideas I have for this show, yeah. Tell first her. of all, the host. Uh, oh, they gotta be really good. Rhoda, they gotta have a strong... Tell her! Uh, Rhoda! Uh, Rhoda, look, Tell Mr. Grant doesn't want to hear about the show. He doesn't want to know about it. He doesn't want to hear about it. Really, really. So let's you and I go talk about the host. Oh, hold it, hold it. Come back here. 
Uh, before I never want to hear about it again, there's one thing I forgot to tell you. Finch wants Ted and Sue Ann Nivens as the hosts. <laughs> you mean Ted and the Happy Homemaker? Oh, no, Mr. Grant, why? Oh, because we've got them. They're under contract. Oh, we got to have other people under contract, too. Oh, sure. You want to use Chuckles the Clown and Uncle Oompa the Polka Prince? <laughs> Welcome to television, Rhoda. <laughs> Hello, Sue Ann. Rhoda! Oh, hi, Sue Ann. What an interesting outfit. I wish I could wear old clothes as well as you do. <laughs> It's going to be just wonderful working with you. Mary, there's something different about your apartment. No, I think it's the same as it was the last time you oh, saw it. Oh, no, no, no. Now, don't you try to fool me. There's something different about no, this room. No, not at all. Oh, there it is. You have a hole in your couch. <laughs> Where? Right here. Oh, yeah, I told you there was something different about this room. Yes. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. George, yes. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi, Ted. I brought George in along to take notes of the meeting. Oh, you take shorthand, huh? Yeah, I can do 115 words a minute. Ah. Right, so if you don't talk fast enough for you, just let us know. <laughs> Run in. Oh, my co-star. How are you, Sue Ann? <laughs> oh, it's going to be so wonderful working with you. I know, I know. <laughs> I know I got a lot to learn. So for this meeting, I'm just gonna, you know, sit back, shut up, and watch the pros in action. That's very wise of you. <laughs> you hear that, Georgette? Very... I got it. Okay, now, Rhoda and I have uh, drawn up some tentative formats dealing with the various departments on the show. Uh, oh. oh. Bad start, Mary. Why? Well, on the cover, it says, Talk the Town with Sue Ann Nivens and Ted Baxter. So? <laughs> I'm bigger than she is. <laughs> I go... <laughs> it seems a silly waste of time to worry about whose name goes first. Oh, well then, as long as Sue Ann doesn't mind, we'll just change the names. Over my dead body, cool. <laughs> Sue Ann, you don't mean to say your name goes before mine. Sue Ann is to laugh. <laughs> Did you get that, Georgia? <laughs> so, Ann, if you think I want to take second billy... Okay, I... okay, I'll tell you what. Here's what we'll do. Ted, at the beginning of the show, your name will go first. And, Sue Ann, your name can go first at the end of the show. Now, let's talk about what goes in between the beginning and the end, shall we? That's the great the way you handle that. <laughs> okay, now, Rhoda and I thought that since Sue Ann is a gourmet cook, we ought to devote one segment to restaurant reviews. That's a marvelous idea. Well, I could do that too, you know. Be good for my image. And let the public know that I'm a real person. Someone who eats food just like them. <laughs> well, Ted Sue Ann is an expert cook. But I know restaurants, Mary. Don't I, Georgia? Oh, yes. Just the other night, he warned me not to order the halibut at the bus station. <laughs> You both do the restaurant reviews. Now, about the opening of the show. Oh, oh, oh hold it, uh, Mary. I had some thoughts about that myself. I thought uh, we could open the show by doing some biographical sketches on me and Sue Ann. Biographical sketches? Well, yeah, you know, tell the Ted Baxter story. Story of a little boy huddled up to an old radio, listening in rapture to Lowell Thomas and, and thinking, someday, someday, someday that'll be Ted Baxter saying, this is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. <laughs> but of course, uh, instead of Lowell Thomas, I'd say, this is Ted Baxter saying so long until tomorrow. Did you get all that, Georgette? I got it. <laughs> you did, really, all of it? Yes, 
This is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. Of course, instead of Lowell Thomas, I'd yes, say this well, is Ted. And then as soon as Ted finished with his biography, I could do mine. How, at only six years old, a frightened but darling child <laughs> named Sue Ann Niven won a baby talent contest impersonating Shirley Temple. <laughs> On the good ship. Oh, that's terrific, Sue Ann. Sit down. <laughs> On the sunny shores of peppermint. Now, listen, everybody, I know I promised before that I wasn't going to say anything, but I think that at this point, right here, I have something terrific to contribute. And that is, um, I hope you'll understand, that idea about the uh, biographical sketches, really dumb. <laughs> what? What did you say? That idea about the biographical sketches, really dumb. <laughs> I know what she said, Georgia. Rather a strong word, isn't it? Well, I think what Rhoda means... I don't care is... what Rhoda means, Mary. Come on, Georgette, we're walking. Just a second, Jim. Come on, Georgette, we're <laughs> Georgette. Thank you for a lovely time, Mary. Oh, uh, Ted, you can't just get on wrong with you. You know, first meetings like this often get off to a rocky start. But, you know, I think by Monday, when we have our production meeting, that we'll have a better idea of the uh, direction that our, our show uh, will be taking. Don't you? <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Grant, I have to talk to you about a problem with the Sunday show. Mary, I told you, I don't want to have anything to do with that show. Mr. Grant, will you please just listen to me? I mean, it isn't every day that I walk in here and give you an ultimatum. You're going to give me an ultimatum? Yes, an ultimatum. Kind of. <laughs> Mr. Grant, either Sue Ann and Ted go, or Rhoda and I go. Wow. Well. I guess if it comes down to a choice between two bright and energetic people like you and Rhoda, or a couple of meatballs like Ted and <laughs> Sue Ann, I'd have to go with them. Uh, why? Because Finch wants them and that's it. So, you gonna quit? No. Mm, good. Mary, let me give you a piece of advice. The one thing you as a producer cannot do is to let Ted and Sue Ann think you're afraid of them. If they smell fear, you're a goner. They go right for your eyes. <laughs> Look, have you, have you tried being brutal? Oh, Mr. Grant, I'm not the brutal type. Well, you know, sometimes when I want to frighten Ted, I give him a look like this. <laughs> think, really scares him. Maybe you could try that. No, Mr. Grant, it won't work for me. It works for you because there's something about you that scares people. Thank you. Look, it's my problem. It's not yours. But, boy, I'm just sorry I ever thought of the idea in the first place. You mean appropriated. The look on your face, I'd say that Ted and Sue Ann are still in. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and Rhoda are out. Huh? No, 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 we're still in. Mary, can I give you a little advice on how to handle Ted and Sue Ann? Yes, please, anything. Flatter them, butter them up. With people like that, you've got to do that sometimes to get what you want. No, <laughs> Murray, that's not me. I'd, I'd rather lose the show than butter those two up. Mary? Mary? Oh, yes. Right. Let's not beat around the bush. Let's get right to the point. Tell us, Sue <laughs> Mary, we want Rhoda off the show. Off the show? I've been reading some of the notes, George, you took at the meeting, Mayor. You know the word dumb was used five times? No, oh, I don't like that word, Mayor. 
Some people don't like the color green. I don't like the word dumb. I don't know what it is about that word that rubs me the wrong way. I just don't like it. It must be the same reason I don't like the word bald. <laughs> to tell Lou that either Rhoda leaves the show or we go. That's right. Oh, uh, okay, wait. Look, um, I gotta be honest here. Uh, I mean, I'm not the kind of person who will butter people up. You know, it, it's, it's just not me. But I know what open-minded and fair people <laughs> you both are. Mary, I'm tough. All right, tough, yes, but good tough. The best kind of tough there is, because you're fair tough. I mean, Sue Ann, you just ask anyone here at the station, and they will all say that the, the beautiful thing about you is the way you have of working with people. <laughs> do they? Oh, they do. They do, they do, Sue Ann. I'm kind of tough, too, you know. You know. <laughs> but every time I mention your name, the one thing that Rhoda always says about you is, besides, of course, how really talented you are, is how patient and tolerant you are of the people who work under you. Well, I look at it this way. You gotta be nice to the people you meet on the way up before they do it to you. Right. <laughs> no, surely you two warm people can find it in your hearts to Forgive and understand the inexperience of a newcomer who was just trying to do the best darn job she could for you guys. Well, oh, all right. Yeah, we'll give Rhoda another you. chance. I knew it. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> Don't say it. Mary, you know, I heard that whole thing with Ted and Sue Ann. Let me tell you something. I've been a producer for many years. And believe me, I've had to do a lot of things that I never wanted to do either. <sighs> but Mary, I've never sunk as low as that. <laughs> Aren't you looking lovely? Thank you. <laughs> Say, Mary, Sue Ann and I came up with a terrific finish for the show. And Rhoda, we both love the idea. Look, uh, why don't we talk about the end of the show when we get to the end of the show? Right now, I'd like to talk about the beginning. Now, Rhoda and that I won't thought be necessary, that... dear. We've already written an opening monologue. A monologue? Yeah. Tell some jokes. Get some humor into this thing. Jokes. Read the introduction, Georgia. And now the stars of our show, the one and only Ted Baxter and Sue Ann Nivens. Thank you very much for that wonderful reception. You know, I haven't heard so much applause since I was held up and spanked as a baby. <laughs> Ted, do you believe the prices of food these days? Meat is getting so high, it's cheaper to eat money. <laughs> but what a beautiful spring day it is today. In fact, it's so beautiful today, I heard that Ironsides decided to walk to work. <laughs> OK, uh, look, uh, Sue Ann, Ted, uh, want to sit down? Well, you can't open a show like that. Why, well, Rhoda loves it, don't you, Rhoda? Uh, no. What? Ted, it's awful. It's the dumbest thing I ever heard. <laughs> There's that word again. <laughs> and that settles it. I want her fired. And that goes for me, too. Okay, well, now listen, you two. I'm going to tell you something. If Rhoda goes, I go. You know somebody we can get? And of course. How hard can it be to find a producer? Right. Oh, you know, you and I could do this thing ourselves. Hey, that's a good idea. Who needs producers, anyway? That's not that much of a job to find. Boy, 
and they're gonna bomb. <laughs> You're fair tough. I mean, Sue Ann, you just ask anyone here at the station and they will all say that the, the beautiful thing about you is the way you have of working with people. <laughs> do they? Oh, they do. They do, they do, Sue Ann. I'm kind of tough too, you know. You know. <laughs> but every time I mention your name, the one thing that Rhoda always says about you is, besides, of course, how really talented you are, is how patient and tolerant you are of the people who work under you. Well, I look at it this way. You gotta be nice to the people you meet on the way up before they do it to you. Right. <laughs> oh, surely you two warm people can find it in your hearts to Forgive and understand the inexperience of a newcomer who was just trying to do the best darn job she could for you guys. Well, oh, all right. Yeah, we'll give her another you. chance. I knew it. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> Don't say it. Mary, you know, I heard that whole thing with Ted and Sue Ann. Let me tell you something. I've been a producer for many years. And believe me, I've had to do a lot of things that I never wanted to do either. <sighs> but Mary, I've never sunk as low as that. <laughs> looking lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Say, Mary, Sue Ann and I came up with a terrific finish for the show. And Rhoda, we both love the idea. Look, uh, why don't we talk about the end of the show when we get to the end of the show? Right now, I'd like to talk about the beginning. Now, Rhoda and that I won't thought be necessary, that... dear. We've already written an opening monologue. A monologue? Yeah. Tell some jokes. Get some humor into this thing. Jokes. Read the introduction, Georgia. And now the stars of our show, the one and only Ted Baxter. Slaughter. I still say it's not for me. <laughs> I've never written a letter like this before. Oh, Murr, you got a fan letter. <laughs> it can't be for me. Well, there's a lot of us out here who realize that Ted Baxter only reads the words, but that somebody with a rare point of view is actually writing them. <laughs> it's not for me. However, we know it takes a twisted, perverted, pinko rat like you to write it. It's for me. Uh, Mr. Grant, don't forget you have that meeting with Mr. Finch at one o'clock. Right. Well, it's one o'clock now. Mary, every time I have to go up for a production meeting with the production director, I have to sit there for ten minutes while he tries to impress me with long-distance phone calls to Milwaukee. Yeah, well, this is a pretty important meeting, though. Oh, I know it is, Mary. For you. It's your idea to have a Sunday afternoon talk show, not mine. I'm just going up there to hear him say yes or no. Well, it's a terrific idea, and if Finch has any taste at all, he's got to like it. Finch? Taste? He's the guy who scheduled reruns of My Mother the Car at 7 o'clock. 
so he'd have something to watch while he ate. Mr. Grant, it's, it's after one. Mary, there's nothing to be nervous about. He's either going to love your idea, or he's going to say it stinks. You see, man, there's nothing to be nervous about. Well, he's right, you know. I mean, it really doesn't matter. If he likes the idea, then I'll produce my own show. If he doesn't like it, I won't. It doesn't matter. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Sitting here at my same little desk, earning my same little money. Mur, it matters. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, yeah, Jill, he's on his way up now. How could he cancel it? Oh. Oh? Oh! Yes, well, uh, we'll just uh, send Mr. Grant down right when he gets there. No, 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 I'll tell him myself. And Jill, you are a wonderful secretary. Bye. Hey, what happened? Well, Mr. Finch had to cancel the meeting, but he left word to go ahead and try one show just to see how it works out. Murray, I'm going to produce my own show. Mary, that's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, wow. Well, Murray, I just hope I do a good job. Are you going to be fine? You really think so? I know so. <laughs> Finch wasn't there. Why are you smiling at me? I know something you don't know. Mary, don't get cute. <laughs> I hate cuteness. Cuteness is not one of my favorite things. Mr. Finch approved the idea. At least we're going to do a pilot. Mr. Grant, I'm a producer. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ann, if you think I want to take second billing... Okay, uh, okay, I'll tell you what. Here's what we'll do. Ted, at the beginning of the show, your name will go first. And, Sue Ann, your name can go first at the end of the show. Now, let's talk about what goes in between the beginning and the end, shall we? That's the great the way you handle that. <laughs> okay, now, Rhoda and I thought that since Sue Ann is a gourmet cook, we ought to devote one segment to restaurant reviews. That's a marvelous idea. Well, I could do that too, you know. It'd be good for my image. I mean, let the public know that I'm a real person. Someone who eats food just like them. <laughs> well, Ted Sue Ann is an expert cook. But I know restaurants, Mary. Don't I, Georgia? Oh, yes. Just the other night, he warned me not to order the halibut at the bus station. <laughs> both do the restaurant reviews. Now, about the opening of the show. Oh, oh, oh hold it, uh, Mary. I had some thoughts about that myself. I thought uh, we could open the show by doing some biographical sketches on me and Sue Ann. Biographical sketches? Well, yeah, you know, tell the Ted Baxter story. Story of a little boy huddled up to an old radio, listening in rapture to Lowell Thomas and, and thinking, someday, someday, someday that'll be Ted Baxter saying, this is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. <laughs> but of course, uh, instead of Lowell Thomas, I'd say, this is Ted Baxter saying so long until tomorrow. Did you get all that, George? Yet? I got it. <laughs> you did, really, all of it? Yes, this is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. Of course, instead of Lowell Thomas, I'd yes, say this well, is Ted. And then as soon as Ted finished with his biography, I could do mine. How... At only six years old, a frightened but darling child <laughs> named Sue Ann Niven won a baby talent contest impersonating Shirley Temple. <laughs> On the good ship, lying on the longest trip to a bomb bomb Oh, that's terrific, Sue Ann. Sit down. <laughs> Sunny shores of peppermint. <laughs> now, listen, everybody, I know I promised before that I wasn't going to say anything, but I think that at this point, right here, I have something terrific to contribute. And that is, um, I hope you'll understand, that idea about the uh, biographic... Like Mary's. Yeah, my daughter gave it to me. Gee, it smells just like summer when I was a kid. It's plastic, Ted. 
I know, it smells just like my old beach ball. <laughs> Did you know that Ted suggested that because of the gas the shortage that we start a carpool? Well, that's not a bad idea. Well, we'd need two cars. You, Gordy, Lou, and I would go in one. Ted would go in the other. <laughs> For you, Murph. For me? Well, I never get any mail. How can it be for me? I don't know. Well, it you. can't be for me. How can it be for me? Dear Murray Slaughter. I still say it's not for me. <laughs> I've never written a letter like this before. Oh, Murr, you got a fan letter. <laughs> it can't be for me. Well, there's a lot of us out here who realize that Ted Baxter only reads the words, but that somebody with a rare point of view is actually writing them. <laughs> it's not for me. However, we know it takes a twisted, perverted, pinko rat like you to write it. It's for me. Uh, Mr. Grant, don't forget you have that meeting with Mr. Finch at one o'clock. Right. Well, it's one o'clock now. Mary, every time I have to go up for a production meeting with the production director, I have to sit there for ten minutes while he tries to impress me with long-distance phone calls to Milwaukee. Yeah, well, this is a pretty important meeting, though. Oh, I know it is, Mary. For you. It's your idea to have a Sunday afternoon talk show, not mine. I'm just going up there to hear him say yes or no. Well, it's a terrific idea, and if Finch has any taste at all, he's got to like it. Finch? Taste? He's the guy who scheduled reruns of My Mother the Car at 7 o'clock, so he'd have something to watch while he ate. <laughs> after one. Mary, there's nothing to be nervous about. He's either going to love your idea, or he's going to say it stinks. You see, man, there's nothing to be nervous about. Well, he's right, you know. I mean, it really doesn't matter. If he likes the idea, then I'll produce my own show. If he doesn't like it, I won't. It doesn't matter. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Sitting here at my same little desk, earning my same little money. Murr, it matters. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, yeah, Jill, he's on his way up now. How could he cancel it? Oh. Oh? Oh! Yes, well, uh, we'll just uh, send Mr. Grant down when he gets there. No, 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 I'll tell him myself. And Jill, you are a wonderful secretary. Bye. Hey, what happened? Well, Miss Hayes, you know. I mean, it really doesn't matter. If he likes the idea, then I'll produce my own show. If he doesn't like it, I won't. It doesn't matter. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Sitting here at my same little desk, earning my same little money. Murr, it matters. <laughs> Newsroom. Oh, yeah, Jill, he's on his way up now. How could he cancel it? Oh. Oh? Oh! Yes, well, uh, we'll just uh, send Mr. Grant down when he gets there. No, 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 I'll tell him myself. And Jill, you are a wonderful secretary. Bye. Hey, what happened? Well, Mr. Finch had to cancel the meeting, but he left word to go ahead and try one show just to see how it works out. Murray, I'm going to produce my own show! Mary, that's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh! <sighs> Oh, Marie, I just hope I do a good job. Are oh, you yeah. going to be fine? You really think so? I know so. <laughs> Finch wasn't there. Why are you smiling at me? I know something <laughs> you don't know. Mary, don't get cute. <laughs> I hate cuteness. Cuteness is not one of my favorite things. Mr. Finch approved the idea. At least we're going to do a pilot. Mr. Grant, I'm a producer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congratulations, Mary. Well, you don't seem very happy for me. Mary, I've been a producer for a long time, and I know something. <laughs> They lowered the temperature at the store again today. It was so cold, Mayor. A guy sprained his back testing a frozen water bed. <laughs> hey, listen, I got some great news today. What? Rhoda, 
the program director wants to do my show. What show? Remember that Sunday afternoon talk show idea I came up with? Ah. Uh -huh. Well, you don't seem very excited. I know, isn't it funny? I'm usually such an emotional person. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine this? I'm not excited over this news. No, no, what's wrong? Nothing. So, they're using your idea for a show, huh? Hey, come on, what is it? Okay, Nan, you've obviously forgotten, but the idea for the Sunday afternoon talk show was mine. Yours? Mine. Rhoda! I don't think so. <laughs> Mary, I know so. Come on, Rhoda, I remember exactly how it came up. Remember it was that Patches? Oh, yeah, you know, tell the Ted Baxter story. The story of a little boy huddled up to an old radio, listening in rapture to Lowell Thomas and, and thinking, someday, someday, someday that'll be Ted Baxter saying, this is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. <laughs> But of course, uh, instead of Lowell Thomas, I'd say, this is Ted Baxter saying so long until tomorrow. Did you get all that, George? Yet? I got it. <laughs> you did, really? All of it? Yes. This is Lowell Thomas saying so long until tomorrow. Of course, instead of Lowell Thomas, I'd yes, say, this well, is Ted. And then as soon as Ted finished with his biography, I could do mine. How, at only six years old, uh, frightened, darling child, <laughs> named Sue Ann Niven, won a baby talent contest, impersonating Shirley Temple. <laughs> On the good ship, lying on the lion's trip to a bomb Oh, that's terrific, Sue Ann. Sit down. <laughs> Sunny shores of peppermint. <laughs> now, listen, everybody, I know I promised before that I wasn't going to say anything, but I think that at this point, right here, I have something terrific to contribute. And that is, um, I hope you'll understand, that idea about the uh, biographical sketches, Really dumb. <laughs> what? What did you say? That idea about the biographical sketch is really dumb. <laughs> I know what she said, George. Rather a strong word, isn't it? Well, I think what Rhoda means. I don't care is... what Rhoda means, Mary. Come on, Georgette, we're walking. Just a second, Jim. Come on, Georgette, we're walking. <laughs> You know, first meetings like this often get off to a rocky start. But, you know, I think by Monday, when we have our production meeting, that we'll have a better idea of the uh, direction that our, our show uh, will be taking. Don't you? Brian. Mr. Grant, I have to talk to you about a problem with the Sunday show. Mary, I told you, I don't want to have anything to do with that show. Mr. Grant, will you please just listen to me? I mean, it isn't every day that I walk in here and give you an ultimatum. You're going to give me an ultimatum? Yes, an ultimatum. Kind of. 